Thank you to Amanda on Facebook for suggesting this case. I wasn't able to find a lot of background information about the victim in today's case, so the focus of this episode is on the aftermath of the murder. Any personal information I do talk about, I got from the book The Forgotten Murder by Brian Burt. 22-year-old Darren Francis Burt, who was born on the 28th of June 1980, lived with his mum Anne, dad Brian, and 13-year-old brother Kevin in Berlanark, about six miles or nine kilometres east of Glasgow city centre. The Burts were a happy, ordinary family, just getting on with the ups and downs of life. On Tuesday the 27th of August 2002, Darren had spent the day with his friends before calling his dad just before 9pm and asking if he would meet him at the local shops to give him some money. Brian happily agreed and met up with his son about 9pm, where the pair spent about 10 minutes having a chat and a laugh as they were very close. Before the pair parted company, Brian said to Darren, I'll see you tomorrow, son. Then Brian headed back home and Darren headed off to meet up with some of his mates with the group then heading to a flat in nearby Burnmouth Road to watch some football and have a few drinks. At about 10pm, a fight broke out between Darren and another man who was also at the flat, at which point all the attendees at the flat were thrown out. Darren, his mates, the man Darren had had a fight with at the flat, and this man's friends all began walking towards Edinburgh Road, where Darren broke off from his friends and went to a local petrol station to buy some food and drink. As Darren was leaving the petrol station forecourt, CCTV shows he was approached by a man who confronted him about what had taken place at the flat. Darren has a brief fight with this man before Darren pushes him to the ground and walks off to join his friends, who had now gathered at a nearby bus stop. CCTV footage then shows three men approach Darren and his friends at the bus stop, with one man pulling something from his waistband, believed to be a knife, and a second man hitting Darren over the head with a glass bottle. Injured from the bottle to his head, Darren flees the three men and his friends. CCTV footage then shows three men running after Darren and chasing him along Edinburgh Road for about half a mile or 0.8 kilometres before Darren then ran down Burnett Road, followed closely by the three men, who were believed to have not only been wielding a knife but also a hammer. Darren then desperately began banging on house doors on the residential street, begging to be let in, now fearing for his life but it was to no avail and Darren was caught by the men a minute later in Calvary Place. Darren was then stabbed in the back repeatedly before falling to the ground where he continued to be beaten on the back of his head over and over with a hammer so severely that his skull was smashed as well as continuing to be stabbed again and again in his back. Then as Darren lay unmoving in the street, the men proceeded to repeatedly brutally kick his defenceless body. The three men who had chased Darren through the streets and carried out a truly brutal and evil attack on the defenceless, unarmed Darren then simply turned on their heels and ran away. Darren was left lying on the street at Calvary Place in his own blood and dying, a mere five minutes away from where his dad Brian sat in their living room happily watching TV, completely unaware of the horrific attack his son had just sustained. Unaware of the utterly devastating blow life was about to hand him and his family, Darren's severely beaten up body was found about 1.30 a.m. It's assumed either a resident had gone to see what had been going on after some time had passed or someone had come across his body who had called an ambulance. Darren was rushed to hospital but he sadly died shortly after arriving. Sadly, Darren's family would not have a chance to rush to the hospital to see their son before he died as they were not informed of his death until 7.30am, six hours after he had been found, when two police officers knocked on their door. Why it took so long for Darren's family to be informed remains a mystery. According to the Forgotten Murder book, which was written by Darren's dad, Brian, he said he had tried to find out an answer to this question, but none has been forthcoming. However, the moment the two police officers arrived and knocked on the Burt family home's door was the moment Brian and his family's world started to spiral out of control. An investigation was commenced after the murder where three men were quickly arrested and charged with Darren's murder. Unfortunately, this didn't go to court as it was deemed there just wasn't enough evidence against the three men. 
A possible reason to this case not going to trial at the time could be because of a prerequisite that is unique to Scotland in comparison to the rest of the UK. It's called corroboration. This means that before a case can go to trial, there must be at least two separate sources of evidence. This can be forensic science evidence, witness testimony or even circumstantial. One witness saying they saw who did it isn't enough to go to trial. There has to be supporting evidence. While corroboration can prove helpful in relation to miscarriages of justice not occurring as often, it can also be a hindrance in other cases, such as rape cases, where a lot of the time it is just one person's word against another. After the case against the three men went nowhere, unfortunately there was nothing else the Procurator Fiscal could do without more evidence, and Police Scotland had already sent through all the evidence they had in the report to the Procurator Fiscal, so it was a catch-22. The only way of breaking that cycle and for Darren's case to be reinvestigated would be if someone came forward with further evidence or information, even if anonymously via Crime Stoppers. But sadly, this didn't happen and nothing else could be done with Darren's case other than to periodically review it, which, unless new evidence had come to light, was a bit of a pointless exercise. Darren's dad, Brian, naturally found this impossible to accept and he fought hard to try and get somewhere with every professional he came into contact with, but it was useless. From reading Brian's book, The Forgotten Murder, I get the feeling that there was a lack of empathy for what this family had gone through, were still going through. Police Scotland and the Crown Office are obviously dealing with many murder cases every single day and I do understand they can't invest all their energies in one case, but I do feel, certainly in Darren's family's case, there could have been more compassion from certain people. All Brian wanted was justice for his son, that's all he was fighting so hard for. He deserved a bit of empathy whilst trying to do this. Darren was his son after all, he'd been murdered and there seemed no prospect of bringing his killers to justice. Another reason Brian felt that Darren's murderers weren't brought to justice was due to the lack of publicity in his son's murder. Unfortunately, Darren's murder at the time was only briefly reported in local newspapers. Obviously, back in 2002, social media wasn't what it is today and Brian would have struggled to get the news of his son's murder out there and get people in the area more invested in the case. He was totally reliant on the newspapers and the police. This theory was backed up by former Police Scotland Detective Inspector David Moran, who said in an STV News article on the 7th of January 2019 that a case will attract media attention because it is of particular concern to the public. Once the media puts it out there, the profile has arisen and public fears are exacerbated. The police will put more resources into that sort of case. So in essence, it appears that David Moran is saying that if you don't have the media and public behind you, then the murder case will slip slowly down in priority, which it appears is what happened in Darren Burt's murder case. It was reported in an article by the STV News on the 7th of January 2019 that in 2002 there were 127 murders carried out in Scotland. In the same article, former Police Scotland Detective Inspector David Moran said that due to the number of murders that his department faced, it could make a difference on how each case was dealt with, going on to say there was one murder coming in after another. Did that mean that sometimes there was work that wasn't done as thoroughly as it could have been? Possibly. I would concede that perhaps some things could have been missed. Although David Moran did go on to say that this wasn't a regular occurrence. Brian Burt, however, most certainly felt this was the case with his son's murder, as despite three men being arrested and charged, they were not prosecuted as the Crown Office deemed there was not enough evidence for the case to go to court. So Brian felt that two reasons his son's murderers were not brought to justice was due to the volume of murders and the lack of police resources or funds in 2002. However, David Moran did go on to say that he feels things have significantly improved, what with dedicated murder investigation teams dealing with most murders. He feels that things have moved on and are more organised now. But is that really the case for everyone? While Darren's family were trying to cope with the awful loss they were facing, as well as having to contend with the fact that it appeared getting justice for Darren would be an uphill struggle, they also had another struggle to face, which was trying to bury Darren, which weighed down heavily on the family. 
as Darren was kept in the morgue until the 23rd of December 2002, nearly four months after his murder, and was only released because Brian fought and fought every inch of the way so they could finally bury Darren and begin the grieving process. Darren was finally laid to rest at St Paul the Apostle Parish Church in Shettleston, just over a mile or just under two kilometres from the family home, where Darren had, 22 years previously, also been baptised. The delay in releasing a murder victim's body we touched on in our Paige Doherty episode, but before a murder victim's body is released, a first post-mortem is carried out to determine the cause of death and to find any evidence. This evidence, if any, is then used to try and catch the murderer. However, if a suspect is caught, then their defence team have the right to request a second post-mortem. Therefore, depending on how long it takes for a suspect to be found, determines how long the body will have to stay in the morgue. For example, there is one case back in 2014 when a murder victim's body had to be kept in a morgue for five years due to delays in bringing the suspects to trial. After nearly four months, Darren's family were finally allowed to bury him and begin the grieving process. However, their struggle had only just begun. Darren's dad was a private investigator, and so he quickly found out details of what had taken place the night of Darren's murder, as well as who may have been behind the brutal murder of his son. However, no one was willing to go to the police with any information for fear of repercussions. What Brian found out was that there wasn't just three men involved, but that there was possibly a fourth man involved as well, but he had not been identified. In addition to this, there was also apparently two women involved too, something which Brian was not even sure if the police were aware of. Brian found out that apparently one woman took the hammer and disposed of it, while the other woman helped the murderers burn their clothes, destroying any DNA evidence. Brian also found out that apparently, while the clothes were being burned, the murderers and their accomplices stood around drinking and laughing, a fact which would have caused Brian so much pain to hear, but perhaps it also motivated Brian to continue to try and get witnesses to come forward, to not let these men go unpunished. And this eventually did pay off, when a friend of Darren's did offer to come forward with information about the murder. However, there was a problem. Darren's friend had a warrant out for his arrest due to not paying a court fine. Apparently the crime was petty, but when Brian approached the procurator fiscal to say that this man was willing to come forward with information if he wouldn't be arrested, the procurator fiscal said that if he came forward with this information, he would be arrested. Upon hearing what the outcome would be if he came forward, Darren's friend changed his mind. It's not known what this information was and whether this friend ever did come forward with this information, anonymously or otherwise, or if he paid his fine, but Brian didn't hear from him again. And soon afterwards, the Burt family would suffer more heartache, and for a time, Brian had his own struggle to contend with. Brian and his wife Anne separated about three years after Darren's murder, but they do remain close to this day. Initially, Darren's brother Kevin moved in with his dad Brian and Anne and Brian did remain close. Nobody else could understand their pain and torment. However, before the couple separated and about a year after Darren's murder, his brother, 14-year-old Kevin, began having problems at school and his behaviour changed. However, rather than supporting Kevin after the horrendous murder of his older brother, his school decided that the best thing would be for Kevin to go to a different school, away from his friends and any form of normality. Again, Brian had a fight on his hands to make the headteacher see that the best thing for Kevin would be some compassion, understanding and help, which thankfully the school finally agreed to. Sadly, though, there was more fighting Brian would have to do, and this time it was an inner fight. Not long before Brian and Anne's marriage ended, Brian had started drinking, just one or two on a night. However, about six months after leaving the family home, this soon escalated, and it's when Kevin started to spend more time at his mum's house. Brian eventually lost his job, but he didn't care. It just allowed him to drink more. He said that this helped him just simply forget forget everything, but only for a short while. Then it was straight back to reality. Brian said what got him through this period was thinking of his son Darren, wanting justice for him and making a promise that he would not rest until the people responsible had their day in court. 
It also helped that his son Kevin decided to move back in with him. But Brian sadly had yet another fight to endure when he was diagnosed with cancer. However, again he fought hard and eventually he went into remission, which is when he decided it was time to start fighting for justice for Darren again. This is when Darren's dad, Brian, wrote the book The Forgotten Murder, which was published in 2018, which he wrote in the hopes of raising £10,000, or $13,800, to offer as a reward for any information that led to finally solving his son's murder. It was a very insightful and interesting book, very heartfelt. Brian also continued to campaign relentlessly to have his son's murder inquiry be looked at again and to gain more publicity to try and achieve this goal. And it looked like Brian's determination had paid off, as in early 2019, 17 years after Darren's murder, Police Scotland said they would reinvestigate Darren's murder, including interviewing all witnesses. All Brian had to do now was wait. However, that was easier said than done, with Brian saying in an STV News article on the 20th of March 2019 that Waiting to hear what happens next is not easy though, and has been affecting the physical and mental health of myself and my family. Although Brian did say in an STB news article on the 20th of March 2020 that the officers have been empathetic, professional and sincere and reassured us that they're conducting a full and comprehensive reinvestigation. Brian also received regular updates from detectives as well as having met a senior Crown Office prosecutor. Following a year of investigation, Brian stated in an STV News article on the 20th of March 2020 that one officer who's been in the job for 30 years said she was confident about handing the new information to the Crown Office. When Brian asked this officer if that meant they felt they had enough evidence or witnesses to put people in the dock, the reply was that that was a decision for the Crown. However, despite this being reported in 2020, and despite the confidence of the officer who had been in the job for 30 years about handing the information that they now had to the Crown Office, nothing more came of this, and it appeared that Darren's murder would remain unsolved. Had the Crown Office even received this new information from Police Scotland? It wouldn't be until the 25th of March 2022, two years later, that it was reported in the newspapers that an investigation into Darren's murder was being relaunched. I don't know, however, what happened to the investigation and the positivity about a report being sent to the Crown Office two years prior. In an article in Glasgow Live on the 25th of March 2022, Detective Chief Inspector Lindsay Waters made an appeal for information, saying that, Despite the passage of time, I am determined to find whoever is responsible for Darren's murder and bring them to justice. DCI Waters went on to give details about the night Darren was murdered, ending with, Someone must have heard something. DCI Watchers' next statement possibly alluded to why the case had appeared to collapse two years earlier when she said, I am convinced there are people out there who have information vital to this investigation who have failed to come forward. This may be down to fear or some misplaced loyalty to those responsible for this horrific crime, but please do the right thing and contact us. She then went on to assure anyone who did come forward that any information would be treated in the utmost confidence, or they could contact Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111. So despite the confidence felt by at least one police officer back in 2020, this statement would suggest that possibly the Crown Office had received the information back in 2020, but had deemed there still wasn't enough information or witnesses to bring anyone to trial for Darren's murder. In 2022, Police Scotland were trying their best to ensure that this time they did receive information or witnesses to be able to bring Darren and his family the justice they deserved. As on Friday the 7th of October 2022, DCI Lindsay Waters appeared on the long-running BBC programme Crime Watch to appeal for information into Darren's murder, in the hope that the reconstruction of events running up to Darren's murder would jog someone's memory who maybe held a detail about the night of the murder, and that even if it seemed insignificant, to please come forward. Also appearing on Crime Watch to make an appeal was Darren's dad, Brian, 
who, after talking about the horrific attack that had taken place on his son, told of the morning his and his family's life was shattered. We got a visit from the police in the morning, and they said, your son has been murdered. That's when the screaming started. All of my family died that day, and it tore us all apart. It was announced on Crime Watch that there was now a £20,000 or $25,400 reward being offered for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the person or persons responsible. Before the appeal on Crime Watch, according to an article in Glasgow Live on the 7th of October 2022, residents living close to Calvary Place, where Darren had been found, and Burnett Road, the area Darren had been chased through, had all received letters from Police Scotland, which urged them to watch the reconstruction on Crime Watch and the CCTV footage that would be shown, in the hope that it helped them remember a vital piece of information that could help bring Darren justice. If you have any information about the murder of Darren Burt, you can contact Police Scotland on 101 and quote incident number EB 06340802 of 28th of August 2002. Alternatively, you can contact the charity Crime Stoppers on 0800 555 111, where information can remain anonymous. Brian, Anne and Kevin will never be the same again and they will carry their grief with them daily. With Brian saying in an article in the Sun newspaper in August 2022 that, I can't breathe. I can't sleep because of this. I think about Darren first thing in the morning, last thing at night, all day, every day. The Burt family just want justice to be served. They want their son's killers caught. In August 2022, Brian was 66 years old and he said he fears he is running out of time to see his son's killers brought to justice. But in the same breath, he said that he will not give up. Brian said in the article in the Sun newspaper that he often returns to the spot where his son's battered and dying body was found, saying that despite it being gut-wrenching being there, it made him feel close to his son. If you can help the Burt family receive justice, please do so now. It's never too late to do the right thing. Scottish Murders is a production of Clurin Torn.